to the Mike on Much Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Veerman. We are here with my friend and trusted producer, Max Kerman. We're also here with our pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham. And working the dials and crushing some food, it looks like, is uh, intern Erica. Erica, what are you eating there? A delicious bowl. There's rice, salmon, ginger. You're not participating in this weigh-in today, though, are you? Mm, no. You're just Why do you think it? she's eating all that ginger <laughs> yeah, guilt-free? And none of us have eaten anything today. <laughs> oh, I have not eaten anything today. <laughs> I have. Would you like I, a bite? I did. Anyone? No, no, no. Thank you. Thanks okay. for offering, though. Uh, yeah, so, so lots going on today on the episode, but one of the things we are doing, if you've been following along, is we're doing our mid, uh, midway weigh-in, I guess, or it's not challenge. good. I don't it know. is not good. It's not good? You no, think Max? yours is bad? Oh, uh, I'm very mad at myself. Or not even mad at myself. I'm just bewildered. Mm-hmm. You know, we should also clear up, Max, because, you know, we, we, you really sort of uh, disparaged the integrity of Shane's uh, scale yeah. on the last episode. Uh-huh. And then what happened when you went home and oh, weighed yourself? On the I still think it was... Three and a half pounds off. Did you not check the scale? You said you would. You said you would send evidence, and then evidence never came. I he sent did. you the he photo. Texted. I sent you the photo oh. of what I what I weighed, and I was, it was it was three pounds off. Oh, okay, yeah. I forgot then. Which I thought it was I thought it was six pounds off, but I was like, fuck the home scale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So should we save the weigh in for the let's end? Let's save that. For yeah, me. that'll be like okay. a little nugget, a nugget I cannot eat uh, <laughs> for the end of the episode. But before we do that, guys, we were in a, a big basketball tournament this weekend. We were in uh, the Raptors Republic three on three tournament. Um, it was pretty a pretty magical way to spend a Sunday with you Honestly, guys. Honestly, this is kind of all I want to talk about, but I wonder if any of our listeners give a shit about us talking about like a but, grown men's basketball <laughs> tournament that means literally nothing. But we can't worry nothing. about them. We okay. just have to do it for us. That's right? true. That's true. That's like every episode, really. Yeah, but, exactly. <laughs> uh, but set it up, Mike. It was the best. Yeah. It was, I, it was literally, I've been thinking about it since it happened. I, I, me too. I mean, I, I wonder though in the telling of the story, should we hold back the results and sort of go through the story or should we just let people know what happened? Let's start from the beginning. All you right. guys, you put the results on Insta. I already know. Mm. You do. Okay, yeah. well, in, in case you don't follow us, let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we, uh, so I, I, I get a, uh, a text from our good friend and former pod guest Blake Murphy. He's a, he's a writer for the Athletic. Great fucking writer, by the way. And subscribe to the Athletic because there's no better recaps for the raps. Oh, Blake all sorts Murphy. of stuff. Deep dives. Uh, Blake will go hard into sort of like a, the, the minutia of the cap. Uh, so it, it's good for sort of intense uh, basketball fans or sports fans in general, and also good for sort of like uh, Max said, game recaps. But anyway. Blake uh, used to work uh, with Raptors Republic, um, and so they've been throwing this tournament for it's a years. Blog. It's a blog. It's yeah. like a Raptors blog. It used to be a part of, uh, of, of ESPN. And um, yeah, so they have this sort of tournament they sponsor every year. One year it was at the actual Raptors practice facility, and we've been in it on and off. This would be like the third time that I've participated in it. Second time for Shane. I believe this is my first time. No, you did it with me, you, Peak, and Pops. Uh, we went up to uh, Scarborough, remember? That was that? That was Raptors Republic oh. 3 and 3. I'm sorry. That was I was so bad in that tournament. That I'm was a sorry. bad run for us. Yeah, we stayed out for terrible. the next four years after that one. I think. <laughs> uh, and then Max, this was your first. First time. Um, yeah, and uh, it was at Ryerson. It was at like the old Maple Leaf Gardens there. Yeah. And uh, you don't know the level of competition you're going to get. But our squad was me, you, Shaney, and our co-host on the pedestal, John Popolis. Man's a member. Man's a member and very tall. Yeah, which is helpful in a basketball tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. What was the lead up like? I mean, Max, you know, Shane and myself and, and, and Pops, we were putting in some pretty good practice time, I felt like. Yeah, you guys practiced, but I wasn't around last week. Uh, I did. I was in L.A. last week, so I did manage to get some sh- like w- about 15 minutes of shooting <laughs> at an outdoor basketball court in L.A. I feel like you're a type of guy, though, Max, and correct me if I'm wrong, too much rust doesn't ever accumulate on your game. No, sometimes if I've been playing a lot and then I'm like getting prepared for the big game, I'll play like shit. And then sometimes I'll, I ha- won't, won't have played for like, Six months, and then I'm amazing. So it doesn't. You're. I think you're totally right. It doesn't totally make a difference. I don't think. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I hadn't played in about two years up until a month and a half ago because I had broken my ankle. Yeah. Then had uh, my daughter, and then for two years I just had hadn't even broken a sweat. Wow. It, wow. On a on a basketball court, mm. so it was pretty. It was pretty humiliating. My first time going back to the court, and I believe you were there. Yeah, yeah. Or it might have been my second time. And I'm like, man, Max, I am rough. And you're like, Haha, yeah, right. And then you saw me shooting around fumbling, and you were laughing pretty hard <laughs> at how bad I was. So I remembered that laugh, and it was <laughs> it was in my head up every single practice. And I every game, I would work on something new, cardio, defense, mm. shooting. Uh, I, I totally forgot how to do layups. <laughs> <laughs> And those had always been a struggle for me. My entire basketball career was simple layups have been my hardest. And if I do do a layup, I'd always have to make it more difficult. 
like, because like a that spin on it or something, something yeah. to justify me missing. And then if I could justify that, I would oddly score it mm. uh, more readily. But anyways, that's still out of my game. I've forgotten how to do layups. And that's the thing I'm working on for the next tournament. But anyway, I just wanted to tell people where I was at. Yeah. In terms and, of my and, skill you, level. and you started to get shots up, too, because you hadn't played much either. I hadn't played. I used to do a Monday night run here in Toronto. Uh, and we used to just play like a lot more. And then when Winona was born. Like starting then, I remember like the next week I was like, I told the guy, I'm like, oh, I can't make the Monday night run, but I'll be back in a couple months once we get the baby settled. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he would ask me and then I'd just be like, oh no, like, you know, babies are hard. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if they tell you that before you have a kid, but finding the time to go do it was hard. So that guy just stopped emailing me. So much like Shane, I actually haven't played. <laughs> Why are you laughing so hard, Erica? What a dick. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, just keep trying me. Just try me once a month and maybe I can come play. But he just stopped. And then I was like, oh, you know, it's, it, that was a hard run to get into. I will say because in Toronto it's as you know Max it's hard to find a good run like mm-hmm. a good sort of regular once a week run with good guys that aren't dicks that's not too competitive yeah. you know yeah you want to in one of these tournaments you want to basically uh, be playing against like competition that's good but not so good that you have no chance and you hopefully be like in the the top half of the sort 100%. of skill level but it's interesting you walk into the gym and this is something that if you've been playing basketball for say, since you're a kid you walk in the gym and you begin to assess people sort of based on you basically start to profile people like do what kind of shoes are they wearing how athletic do they look yep. and sometimes you're right sometimes you're like oh this person looks like a baller and is a baller sometimes you think that they look like a baller and they're actually fucking terrible and then sometimes people that don't look good are actually fucking amazing you know like just like just just on the basis of Max, their you saying don't judge a book by its cover. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm yeah. pretty good at assessing people. Oh, you really? Fine. Like the the one game we played, that dude who had kind of like the uh, the longer hair. He was the really excellent player. Uh, the dread guy. Game? Yeah, he kind of had like a, it was it was more curly. It wasn't but dreads, but it was in it the was dreads. Dreads. In the final game. Yes, it reminds me of the guy from uh, from uh, what's the what's the workaholics yeah. like the third guy in workaholics. Yes. He had that. So style hold, this is a great example. You thought he was good. I could. I've seen so many guys with that vibe. You knew he was like some sort of triathlete based on his body type. John also scouted him. John did. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I was saying uh, to John or my wife, like I guarantee that guy's good. Yeah. You can just tell. Yeah. See, he. I did not think he was good. I thought he had too much of like a hippie vibe to him, and he was oh, very no. friendly and smiley. Those guys were his killers. Yeah. He. He. Because if he was truly a hippie, us. he wouldn't show up for the tournament. Yeah, that's that's. He very just true. had the vibe of a hippie. Yeah. Tribal tats on the leg are also a great <laughs> sign of one. It's usually a very big guy, and they're like they set the craziest picks. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, leading up to this tournament, I, I hadn't hooped in, in over a year ever since Winona was born. But Shane and John were they were going. Um, and so I started joining them just to like, I want to get shots up because I'm like, if I'm going to play in this thing, like it's like my role is basically just to shoot open jumpers, like just shoot three pointers yeah. and play hard defense. And then you guys do sort of the, the other stuff cut as well. Always cut to the hoop, yeah. shoot. To, but I was like, I don't want my shot to be shit. And I haven't shot anything in so long. I will say the two weeks of sort of like practicing every day, going over to the Grange by work. I got my shot back. You so guys like, both shot incredibly well, especially from three. Yeah. 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 That was the practicing. But like to your point, Max, you're able to walk in. Everything seemed to be working for you. If we hadn't practiced leading up to Sunday, to yesterday, it would have been like, you know. Well, the practice paid off. Yeah. I mean, it did. Uh, yeah. It did. But yeah, so we walk in there. You, you size up all the, the different teams. And uh, yeah, I don't know. You just kind of start rolling. Our first game, we... Uh, we, we killed them. We, we, were, we were on fuego, man. Yeah. Well, it was funny. So uh, it's, you basically round robin. There's four teams per division. We had a back-to-back immediately. And the, and the second game, we lost. And the, we did. And the team we was, lost badly, too. Yeah, and the, and the team was quite good. Uh, and it was funny, though, because I uh, uh, Steve from Pup... Uh, was also playing in the tournament because he's old roommates with uh, Blake Murphy. I'm talking about Pup the band. And uh, Steve goes up to me. He's like, uh, you know, Blake uh, makes a schedule for this tournament. And um, <laughs> we don't have any back-to-backs. There's no schedule losses for us. <laughs> and I was like, that's so fucking funny. Because if you're a sports fan, obviously, it's like playing a back-to-back is much harder. And sometimes they'd call a schedule loss. Because if you're playing a, t- a tough team on the second half of a back-to-back, then you're, it's just going to be it's a like loss. It's like a foregone conclusion. Yeah, foregone almost. conclusion. Yeah. yeah, so it's just like, I just like love that Blake Murphy in his nerdiness made sure that his own team that he was playing for didn't have to play twice didn't in a row. Didn't have to play twice in a row. We had to play twice in a row. Yeah. And that second game, actually, like about five minutes into the game, th- this one huge guy, like they had two bigs, like yeah. guys that were legitimately big, and they played kind of on the perimeter, so they played more like guards, which mm-hmm. is tough. That guy laid me out on a moving screen. He basically ran into me. There's like five minutes into yeah. the second game, and still, to like honestly, a day later, it's actually worse. My chest felt like like my left lung exploded when I ran into that yeah, guy. Yeah, I didn't see the play, but I just heard 
might go, oh, what the fuck, man? We're supposed to be having a fucking good time right now. What the fuck? I wish Bro. it was. <laughs> so I run into dude. Well, he runs into me. Ref calls the foul. I'm like, yes. Like, it is a fucking foul. And and I was so mad. And also, I was like, this, like, my kind of, like, my left shoulder kind of went numb. And that's exactly what I said. I'm like, just, just pick up. We're supposed to be having fun. And I could hardly breathe. <laughs> well, the ref came over and gave him a talking to, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd never seen that before. Screen. Eh, whatever. He was much bigger than me, too. So I would say it looked worse than it is, but it actually was bad. And then um, and then the guy was like, uh, he kind of felt bad. He's like, oh, just, uh, he's like, it's just a basketball play, man. And I didn't say anything oh, more. Oh, don't say that. And then after, after the game, though, he did come up and say, hey, man, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, I'm like, I was just... I was hurt, like, physically, and, uh, you know, my pride was a little bruised. But I didn't know what it was. And then the rest of the day, though, I was, like, I couldn't really play D right. Like, I couldn't lift my left arm really quickly. Or if I tried to, like, move quickly, I would just get, like, a shooting pain. But it didn't keep you from shooting the lights out. You you seemed to shoot better after you got injured. It was crazy. Well, because it's like you knew that that was your main purpose. Like Matt Thomas on the Raptors. (laughs) You were like, okay, I can't really play D. I can't be aggressive. But I can still shoot threes. Yeah. That's what, what I did. Okay, here's a question. Um, what do you think is your ideal frame of mind to play your best basketball? Because um, I like I feel like you get really good when you get like kind of insanely like, like competitive. Uh, in the in the one game when we were losing by like seven points, yeah, that is my best frame of mind. Because mm. I'm like, fuck it, I've already played bad this entire game. Now they're going to be really shocked when they realize I'm actually good. Ah. And then I just started getting the ball on defense, and they were like, what the fuck? And because I knew there's a point spread that matters. Yeah. And then I just jack a turnaround three, goes in, then I steal the ball off the guy, and they were like, oh, like we yeah. thought the game was over. I'm like, point spread, point spread, and then I start playing crazy when there's nothing to lose i play the best Mm. see i think i play the best when i'm very like like loose and having a good time i feel like when i when i think i need to get into like serious athlete mode where i'm like putting my game face on things tighten up for you. yeah i think i just but when i'm joking around and having fun being like steph curry like using my shoulders you not only did that the whole time but even in the game we were losing where their big was like hitting these step back threes max who's on our team is going woohoo (laughs) <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. All right. <laughs> like he was enjoying the the, the display of of shooting from the other team. Yeah, and I was like, I, dude, I think that lo- that keeps me kind of loose when when somebody else like fucks us up. I'm like, woo, and I pat him on the ass. Yeah, yeah. you're all into it. Someone at one point, another team, a guy had like a spin around step back, and it like went in again. You're like, all right. Like, yeah. And it's like, wow. Yeah, I like is- being really loose or really angry. Mm. It's the middle ground I screw up on when it's like a really tight game. Because then that that tension doesn't help me. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you, well, I I I can't when I do play angry like like I get mad. I just end up kind of like I don't know like because if it doesn't work out, then I even feel worse. So it's yeah, almost yeah. easier not to like show them that I care. Yeah. See what I mean? And what's like angry anyway? Just harder fouls in like a pickup game. So I just you know I, I'm I'm probably better in that middle ground where I'm like nice and loose. But uh, yeah, I, I mean it's interesting because. When you do play, like, against other people, like, my thing is basically, like, on a team, especially with you guys, uh, like, you two and John, which is, like, it, it good in a three-on-three tournament, I'm just, like, I don't want the guy I'm guarding to score more than me, and I want to hit more than 50% of my three-pointers, yeah. and then I've had a good game. Yeah. But if the guy that I'm guarding has more points than me, then I'm, like, I've let the team down. Mm. And then you, like, you're thinking about it at night and all that stuff, but everything, like I said, I, I walking away from this tournament, like, we all felt pretty good about yeah. our games. So we uh, win the last game easily. So there's three teams in our division that are, bo- are th- two and one. Yeah. And then there's one team that's 0 and three. And then you cross over to the other division. And so because we had the best point spread, to Shane's point, mm-hmm. we ended up fin- finishing first in our division. And we played the last place team in another division. For round one of the playoffs. For round one of the playoffs. Yeah. We beat them quite easily. And then what begins to happen is that everybody begins to scout each other's teams <laughs> and you try you go over to the scores table to see who you might be playing so then you go over to the court and you watch the game of the the winner that you're going to face yeah and what was really exciting is that the games end up being really fun to watch mm-hmm. because you kind of got to get a feel for these these various characters that you might have played against or you might have seen playing on the other court and the, and we were waiting to see the the winner of one of the games and this guy and he, he was not athletic and he didn't maybe on the surface look like a a great like traditional basketball player yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but he was just went unconscious and it was one of the best sports performances of the fucking year he was He's like, like a this, shorter bigger guy yeah he scored nine points yeah yeah and 
and he basically was just like throwing up threes from like forty feet Steph away. Steph Curry threes, Steph, yeah. and it was like swishing. It was fucking crazy. The sidelines the cockiest were guy yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was like, yeah, and he was, and and he did the thing which I kind of liked. It was when he made some incredible shot that should not have gone in. He was totally stone faced, as if he knew that was exa- that was exactly yeah. what yeah. happened. You know, it's like when guys oh, don't yeah. react, well, they he do something shot insane. one from almost half. <laughs> yeah. It's an impossible shot, and then he turned around like it was guaranteed to go in, and started like running the opposite way, <laughs> and it just clunked. That, that was the one he missed. <laughs> it's like why run the other way? It's not a full court game. There's no advantage to get back on defense. Just stay put. <laughs> well, on that note, one of the advantages of being a three on three tournament is that none of us could get too tired. If it was like no. a five on five full court, that's when you really get. Cast. Three on three is truly like the best sport for like thirty year old dudes to play because it's just super. It's it's like you feel like you're getting a good workout and you are, but you're not getting gassed if you have to run like like you have to run a full court. And if you are, you're not as much of a liability because you yeah. can just stay put. Yeah, like now I'm on offense, now I'm on defense. I'm in the exact same spot. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true, but I but I also feel like it allows for more like half court sets, which is I think more fun yeah. as opposed to just like running fast breaks like track me game you can actually play more fundamental like pick and roll basketball yeah. you can like spread it out a bit whereas i feel like in five on five especially if you're playing depending on the skill level and the athleticism of different people mm-hmm. if you get like a super young athletic team they just want to get out and run so it's like you're in a track meet and it's not like you're setting things up in the half court you know what yeah. i mean whereas it, it's all you can do in three on three yeah so we made so we win the we win our uh, quarterfinal game we're in the semis and we play against this team who there were our the, the semis fans. are the last. This is the last game before the finals. Yeah. No, no. Uh, we, in the quarterfinal game, we that was the, where we played the Globetrotter team, right? No, where the, we became the Globetrotters. We became the Globetrotters. <laughs> yes. So it was just this terrible team. And uh, each guy, I think their tallest guy was maybe 5'10". Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he was like their rebounder, et cetera. And we just ran the floor with them. And it made us feel amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like we're throwing like, behind the back pass. But then I, I took it way too far. I'd like throw up a shot, miss, grab my own rebound, and throw it back in. Yeah. And they're like, uh, this is cheating. They're <laughs> like, you, you shouldn't be doing this. And then I had to like chill out. I was at one point, I was, if it got any further, I was going to have to have a talk with you and John uh, to, to stop playing. That's I know. I got, that, I got the vibe, and the guys kind of gave me on the other team, like, you're trying too hard. Yeah. yeah. But I'm like, my daughter's there, and it's like, <laughs> she's but never I, seen me play, and this is a game I can actually do all my stupid bullshit yeah yeah but on the other hand you don't want to like show up people sh- show up to way. be like they were so, down like 20 it was yeah bad. yeah but you also would need to like play a little like pr- at least pretend to play a little bit of defense so you don't like embarrass them by exactly. that was even harder for me actually yeah. to pretend because i'm like i don't want to patronize them yeah. too much yeah. it's like when you're at work and you have nothing to do it can be almost more work pretending you're working and more stress. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, how? What's my level of respect here? I think it's just like, yeah, cut pass. But we were doing that thing where we were making like five passes that run necessary, yeah. and that. But again, that only lasted for like a minute and a half, and then everybody chilled out. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, very so what, fun to murder them though. <laughs> <laughs> so then, what happened was uh, we were expecting to play the team that beat us in the round robin. Yeah, we wanted because to they were quite good. Was that like, was the I, only loss we'd had of the day. Yeah. And then, and then we look over, and it's just, we just see that they've lost to this Couldn't team in it. the red. And we're like, how did they fucking lose? And, I, and we saw the team. I was profiling the team, and I was like, those guys don't look that good. But uh, they were actually much more skilled than you would have thought, and they had this one crazy dude who was just kind of toying with everybody. Like, he was a very team-oriented player. Uh, the game begins. He's not hogging the ball. He's shooting. He's getting mm-hmm. everybody on his team is getting shots. Everybody's involved. But you can just kind of tell. There's like at a certain point, he's going to turn it on yeah. and he's going to fuck everybody up. And that's exactly and he what had a happened. killer instinct. Yeah. Oh, that's he was it. a really nice guy. But I'm not sure if you noticed, he did not let his substitute come in at all. They didn't oh, yeah. sub in their fourth guy at yeah. all. Yeah. They, you know, it's, so this game that we're talking about right now, this is the last game before the final. So yeah. we really want to win this game so that we can get into the final. And we run into this team, like Max is saying, one of their guys came up at some point. He's like, hey, can I get a photo with you? He's a big Art Kells fan. Yeah. I'm thinking, this is good. I'm like, you know, maybe he'll want to lose to Max. Yeah, I kind of felt like in that <laughs> moment, like, you know, when like players would come up to Kobe and be like, yo, Kobe, like I'm playing against you. Can I have your shoes after the game or <laughs> yeah. something like that? Or like when uh, Kobe I, loves it. He's like, oh, yeah, man, you're doing good, young fella. And then you kill him. And then you kill him. So that's what I was hoping would happen yeah Yeah. well my wife came up to me and she goes that's the best player on the team he's the only guy who matters she goes don't let him get the ball just stick on him like glue and And Shane you were amazing on defense oh so for the first uh we you I think you scored the first basket or John yeah and then I get it shoot a uh three goes in I'm like thank god like you love to score early against a really good team and then I was guarding the guy 
so he couldn't even get the ball. Yeah. Because once he gets the ball, he's faster than me, but he's not faster than me when he doesn't have the ball. Uh. And then they were just getting really nervous because they didn't have the really good guy and they were throwing the ball out of bounds and shit. Mm-hmm. But when I subbed out, I told you, don't let him touch the ball. And you, you were letting him get the ball. Oh, I, I, I mean, I, maybe I could have tried a little harder. The dude's super fast. I'm not as fast as you, you were, defense. You were playing awesome, though, like in terms of hitting shots. On yeah. offense, you were exerting a lot of energy on offense, and it was hard to face guard that guy. Oh, yeah, was I, he was it. so fast. It's like you, you really kind of appreciate um, how quick guys are that actually play basketball for real and like have real athletic ability. Because I, like, I, I was saying this to somebody earlier in the week, like, like, are you a good basketball player? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a very good average basketball player. So if you put me up against a bunch of average people, I'm very good. Yeah. If you put me against like real basketball players, I'm fucking terrible. Like, and, and that's like the difference. That's yeah. how I describe my ping pong abilities yeah. to people. Oh, really? I'm like, I'm a really good recreational player. Yeah. If you are good, I am not good, though. Yeah, exactly. So this guy, just like, with the ball, just like flew by me. Like, I feel like such a fucking old man. Um, but he, we were up. He was also one of those guys too that like he would go by you and then John would step because we have John in the middle. John's huge. John would like put his hands up and the guy would contort his body and then like wrap around him and lay it in. Like, like he was he was an athletic like yeah. marvel in that way too, where it's like, oh, he's probably just a three point shooter, so just get up on him when he drives, Johnny will swat it. But then the guy would like contort his body around, put English on the ball and it would go in and it was like yeah, he's going to be a Speaking problem. Speaking of John, one thing we have not mentioned in the first three, John like is fucking amazing. Oh, like, yeah. He's the perfect guy to have on your 3-on-3 team because he's a big body, but he's got a great touch around the hoop, and he's a good defender. And there'd be, there'd be moments where I'm like, okay, which one of us is going to score? And just like dump it down. It was like, just dump it down to John, and he'll figure out. Yeah. And which was very, Get very it to good. him, spread out, yeah. and then if they double down, just be open to shoot shots. Yeah, and he's a good passer, too. Oh, like yeah. He plays even better in tournament play with the kind of pressure on than he does in our games when we're just playing for fun. Pick oh, up, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. yeah. But what great. bothered me about that game where we lost was... Spoiler the, alert. They didn't let the player play, who was their worst player. Oh, yeah. Well, find, we'll never know. He didn't get sub in. I find out afterwards he's the organizer of the tournament. <laughs> yeah. And magically, even though you're, part of basketball is, there is a, an element of human error, and that element is the ref. So Max hits three threes in that game. Yeah. What I thought were three threes, but no, their substitute player is calling foot foul on Max. Like foot on the line. Foot, foot and he on, was the, on line. the other side of the court. He's on the other side of the court. So oh. he has x ray vision all of a sudden. <laughs> and I'm like, why is the ref listening to this dude? Yeah. I'm like, you can't listen to just random dudes. And then I find out he's on their team. Yeah. And he's the organizer. So this guy's signing the ref's check and, <laughs> and making the calls. And also, one of the guys on their team who was playing got injured, like basically turned his ankle. And instead of coming out for the substitute, which you typically would do, mm-hmm. he was like, no, I'm going to stay on the court. And so we lose by one when really, if those threes had counted, which they would if that guy wasn't policing yeah. our game and only our game because he wouldn't call a foot foul on any other game. Yeah. We really won. By one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then at the end, with 10 seconds left, they're trying to run out the clock, but the yeah. guy had like a bit of a panic attack, the one guy. He throws the ball up to uh, his teammate. I see it in the air. I run to grab it, mm-hmm. but the big guy kind of gives me a shove and rips it off of me. Mm-hmm. And he's much stronger than me. Yeah. That oh, one was right in front of the ref, too. Right in front of the ref, but the ref doesn't want to make some controversial call, which yeah. does happen. What's too. heartbreaking, though, is we were only down one. Yeah. So if he calls that, we were in the penalty. Shane goes to the free throw line for a very uh, pressure packed free it throw. It would have been amazing. Because it would have meant we would go to overtime. <laughs> exactly. Or I miss it purposely and hit a three. That would have been cool, but, Erica, it, but the clock doesn't. Very stop. not smart yeah. play, yeah. but Erica, how are we coming off right now? Like, is 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 this insane talk? It was up until I found this out. This is that's like uh, this whole tournament's rigged. It is, yeah. isn't it? Does that infuriate you? It guys? it does. Just because why is he called? Leave it to the ref. Yeah. Like you, he all, shouldn't even be on a team. I was watching the video footage because manager Ash, who we haven't talked about too, yeah. spent her Sunday filming the entire <laughs> game, <laughs> which we'll get to, which is the best. Okay. <laughs> but I did watch the one shot you took. I zoomed in and it was like CSI Miami or whatever, like yeah. enhance, enhance, enhance. And it looked like your foot was over on the one. Mm. 
So I have no doubt that his foot was on the line for the two on, shots. On, you think it was? I just I don't think uh, the guy like I don't think anybody would have cheated. I just think the ref might have missed it. Yeah. Like, if and, that guy wasn't calling it. And do you think that's out. part of the game though? A ref missing a yeah. call and that's that's uh, absolutely. I mean, John got hacked. I in that game, I had a layup. I I I, I went. I pump faked at the three. They ran out. They were yelling shooter actually at one point, which made me very oh, flattered. Oh, that's mm-hmm. great. That was the nicest thing I've ever heard. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, real. Oh, thank you. And then when dude flew by me trying to block the three pointer, I I drive in. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for the layup. John kind of seals his man. And the guy guarding me, the Arkells fan, that yeah. blonde kid, uh, hacks me in the arm so hard. And I like look at the ref. Yeah, I remember, I that. remember that. I'm like, I'm like, that ain't a turnover, brother. Yeah. And then I was like, it's going to be that kind of game. But anyway, right. so long story long. Uh, no, I don't think they would have cheated. I don't know if it's in the spirit of the game. I think people. They get, were very nice guys, by the way. The, the, and we're nice guys. Team, yeah. Like, here's the thing. Like, you know, what are we going to do? Run over the ref after and be like freak out about it it's like it's all in and good what fun. are you gonna be mean when you're cheating your ass off <laughs> of course you're gonna be nice if you just swindled a bunch of guys the, but i will say this the team that they beat before us uh which which is the team that beat us and they Brian were robin the the one guy on that team who was very very good who who carried that team was arguing with the ref for the next 15 minutes after yeah. the game wow. and i was like dude it's fucking sunday morning this is like a very b minus level tournament who gives a fuck? Like, like yeah. what are you trying to prove right now? That, that, that's when you see, like, rec uh, league behavior go. Did like, you try to get into, listen to what he was saying to the ref? Yeah, yeah a little bit. I yeah. couldn't really make it out. He, he was saying, I'm going to kill you and your family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and man. the ref was like, listen, that's fine. I just missed the play. Look. Uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, manager Ash, uh, Oh, but, but, you know, we I left the uh, the um, the tournament with Ash to, to do some work, and I was like, you know what was good about this tournament, even though we lost? I was like, each one of us played pretty good, mm-hmm. and 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 I feel like it wouldn't have been fun knowing if if like one of us had had like a bad shooting day or yeah. like whatever. Like if, if if one of you guys felt like you played like shit, you would have been everyone would have been like, ah, fuck. But I think because we all played pretty good and yeah. we and we lost in a valiant way, yeah, it was like that was the best Sunday morning. And the team that beat us, they did play hard. You know, and they like were good. it's like it's breaks of the game. It was a one point loss, and uh, I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that we hit them on a couple of things that didn't get called. Yeah, not that I can remember right now, but I'm just trying to be diplomatic. How did Ash feel about coming out on a Sunday and filming all those, and then ed- editing all of our videos? Oh, Ash loved it. Ash had Ash had an awesome time. Yeah, so Ash basically is on the sideline, and basically she only films us when we're on offense. Just yeah, because she's smart. Yeah. As soon as we miss a shot, she deletes it. <laughs> Oh, that is so. Because I wasn't sure if she had to edit all that footage. No, no, after. no, no. She no. Smart. Ash is like the most organized person ever and the smartest person ever. So basically, at uh, breakfast afterwards, when I'm with her, I start going through the things, and the only videos that we have are just us scoring. We look fucking incredible. I'm like, this is the best shit ever. So uh, she sends. Um, I, I just send the stuff of myself naturally mm-hmm. to myself first. I'm on the bus on the go uh, go bus home, and I edit together the video on TikTok, which you you've probably seen already <laughs> on the internet. And it's me, and I, and you can pick a soundtrack, and I, I have a little bow wow. We're playing basketball. Is it tied to spot? How does TikTok work with music? Uh, it- there's no royalties with music. It's like, just like there's just a database of songs that you can just choose from. But not all songs are there, and not the real versions of songs are there okay. because because you asked for Pat Benatar. Hit me with your best shot, and they don't have that version. I use the Catherine Zeta Jones version for your. Uh, oh, from your uh, from that Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, and I don't know how to edit. There's there's a bunch of parts in the app that are a little like clumsy. So like figuring out exactly how to do things, I'm still confused by. But basically, I put together a 20 second montage of me just scoring, and I swear, guys, I've watched it about 75. You times. You did a Max Kerman mixtape. Oh my god, I did an and one mixtape for myself, and I feel even. Better. If I thought I felt pretty good about uh, the, the tournament af- like 15 minutes after, like a day after, I feel incredible about it. <laughs> because I've just watched myself looking like a fucking hoopster. J.R. Diggs texted me this morning at uh, like 11 a.m. said, they're talking about you on the Fan 590 right now. They said, really? Max is a real hooper. He's not like Bieber, who's a fake hooper. This guy's actually fucking <laughs> wow. good. Because I posted God. it and, and it got shared on Raptors Republic and so like in the sports Toronto sports blog world, people are just seeing my greatest highlight reel where I actually I have a no look left handed pass on a pick oh, yeah. and roll. You John, put a little bit extra it. care into your edit than yeah, you did for ours. sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but in Max's defense, he edited one for all all three of me. I know, it. but he left out certain passes. I made some requests you on did, things, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. but oh, I realized why you didn't include it because. Some of my pa- best passes were to you. Were to me. And that was in your mixtape. But I would have done that, but I thought you would accuse me of giving myself more uh, like limelight 
because I was including no, myself in your mixtape. No, I never do that. Okay. I just like accuse you, you of making my yeah. video very boring <laughs> yeah. because my song is Who Let the Dogs Out, so it kind of needs that frenetic energy. Hey, we'll do another edit after the pod. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can sit down with me. You can sit down in my editing suite. And we can do it together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, shouts to, to Mandra Ash because she also got these awesome... Uh, we were the only ones there not wearing the Raptors Republic Versible Journeys. We had, Mike we, had, on much tanks. we had our own mic on much tanks that were made specifically for custom tanks for this tournament. Yeah. Look pretty sharp. We actually got complimented twice or at least other yeah. teams came up to me and complimented they like it. So, yeah. so I'm like, guys, I'll, I'll do an edit for you. Tell me what song you want to use and I'll do it. So you wanted Who Let the Dogs Out. You want to hit me with your best shot. Yeah. And uh, John wanted We Like to Party. Vanga Bus yeah. is coming. <laughs> and I will I say crap. that, you know, that was a funny one when I was watching the three edits. That track actually made me laugh the most. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his game is so strong and powerful that you're watching him do these like powerful spin moves where he's pushing guys out of the way. But then it's the silliest song that it actually made me laugh the most. And I'll say this. I get to watch myself a lot. Like after our Kel shows, Ash will film shit and I'll just kind of get to marvel at myself. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe it's just old hat now because we perform a lot and I don't get to watch myself playing basketball. But the satisfaction I got watching myself play basketball and just the good shit was like nothing else. It was like yeah, the greatest cool. drug ever. Yeah. It was so fucking good. How great. do you think physically you look in a cotton jersey? Oh, I, I could be worse. Yeah. What, how do you think? I thought it looked really bad. Like in really? my mind, I feel, feel slimmer than I look. I thought you looked good. Oh, thank and you. And you, by the way, your tattoos give you hot guy points. Which is the no, only like time I've that. ever wanted tattoos because uh, I'm in another group chat uh, mm-hmm. with some friends. Uh, some of them are girls, and uh, you're they're, they're like, "Who's the guy with the tattoos?" You got oh, nice. tattoos. Yeah, yeah, I like this. Yeah, I, they, they, they already knew who I was. I guess <laughs> 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 a lot of people did think I was in Arkells, though. Well, this okay. Oh, well, this is the best. Is that I um, I put this in our in our text group, but it deserves saying on the pod is. Um, I just searched Arkells in Twitter just to see if anybody mentioned me from the basketball team. <laughs> uh, not, not, not that I was added, but just like just the, the word Arkells. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's a tweet that said, the Arkells really came out like the 2014 Spurs and put on a clinic, never listening to their music again. <laughs> and so they thought that Michael Much was the Arkells. Well, ah. that guy came up and he goes, you know Arkells? I go, no, 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 just, just him. He's like, ha ha. It was like the uh, ring thing. Where I had the, uh, oh, the, the championship the ring, and I said it wasn't real, and the guy laughed at me. So this is the same thing, because the tweet says the Arkells can ball. Yeah, which is fucking And that's awesome. the guy I said I'm but, not in But for uh, non-Hoops fans, the 2014 Spurs won the fucking championship. They're known for the beautiful game. It's all passes and cutting, man. Yeah, so and I thought you guys said praise. that to yeah. us. What? Uh, on, on another team, they said we were like the Spurs. Wow. Honestly, three of our five mm-hmm. games, like we were in the pocket. Yeah. We were in the pocket, man. And, and I'll really say, hey, by the guy, way, the game that we lost, we played pretty good. I know. Yeah. It was a one-point loss. It was a one-point loss. No. The really good guy said I was like Tony Parker guarding him. Wow. Yeah. So I, Which I, guy? The, the guy who murdered us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He was very nice. With the ponytail. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he came up to me <laughs> yeah. after. He was like, you know, man, if the, those foot on the line threes, you guys are winning that game if that doesn't get called. Like, also, he was super complimentary. Also, that Arkells fan hit a banker three. That was a prayer bullshit. Oh, he, that was. Yeah. And I was like, you didn't call it. Yeah, yeah. Those two points, they made they made the difference. And I missed a wide open layup that I was meaning to pass the pops, but he didn't roll. Mm. Hey, My yes. fault still. Well, I hope our listeners are enjoying the minutia <laughs> of these games. <laughs> no, uh, listeners, and then that we want that your pops feedback. Didn't get that rebound, and then yeah. <laughs> Did that rebound. Yeah, oh, and I didn't uh, hit that left-handed layup. We we do. Oh, yeah, tell us if this was a good segment or not. This no, might be the I longest the segment answer. we've ever done. Yeah, in our well, life. how long are we on? Thirty-three this one? minutes. On <laughs> this, <laughs> is <laughs> this is outrageous. This is outrageous. This is the most like, self-indulgent <laughs> bullshit. Inside the NBA, man. Inside the NBA, but what would it be inside the uh, the mediocre uh, the rec league? Inside the rec league, can we play another tournament league. though soon? That was I'd love to. I, I was googling like tournaments <laughs> like within a three hour radius. Like I'll go to Detroit. We could have a fun like overnight. Ooh, thing. Guys, fun. you should organize yeah. your own tournament. <gasps> That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. Why couldn't we organize our own tournament? There's something fun. The one thing I'll say, there's something fun about playing against people who you don't. Know. Yes, that's true. Uh, um, yeah, I feel like uh, we should definitely do it again. Let's, yeah. let's run it back because it was it was a good time. All right. So in conclusion, uh, moving on from this very long uh, uh, segment about the amazing and very fun uh, Raptors Republic three on three tournament, jump in next year. It's a really good time. Yeah. But if I, anyone knows any three on three tournaments within a three hour radius of Toronto, <laughs> just let us know. Send us an email link. Or, we'll show up and hoop. Yeah, I would love to. And I think, you know, it was cool because, like, my parents came. Man, Drash was there. 
your wives came, your daughters came. I think we play good with a crowd. So I think this opens a door for pod, can- pod fans to mm-hmm. come cheer us on. That's a great point, too. We didn't even mention that. Like, the support system we had. Yes. Like, all John's our wives wife came, John's came. wife came, and we had, like, three little kids running around. They were watching us hoop. I, th- I think we were the only people there with kids. Maybe yeah, there was one, one other, other guy. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, like, it was nice. It felt like this fun thing to do on a Sunday yeah. morning. I, I feel forward. like I have nothing to look forward to right now, though. Mm, okay, like, I always like something coming up in the future yeah, yeah. that I have to, like, train for, prepare for. Yeah, let's uh, let's find attorney yeah. soon. Just mostly because we need Shane to have something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah. So we'll find a three on three tournament. But I guess this is going to be like the sports episode. Yeah. Because our next topic or our only topic really uh, is about sports. It's this huge story that went down um, in the MLB. The Houston Astros, who won the uh, World Series last year, two years ago, twenty eighteen, I think. Yeah, uh, they've been uh, sort of. I, I came to say implicated. They've been sort of. Uh, it's 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 happened. Verifiably, Baseball, verifiable cheaters. Yeah. Uh, MLB has like handed out suspensions to their coach and GM. But they were fired. They were fired. Well, no, no, no. What happened was the MLB suspended them both uh, for a yeah. year, and then the Astros decided to fire mm. them instead of letting them sort of just not come to the park yeah, yeah. for a year. Uh, so yeah, the MLB suspended the, the the GM and the coach, and then the team decided to fire those guys. Uh, no players were implicated in this cheating scandal. Uh, the The reasoning from Major League Baseball and the commissioner was that it would be too hard to decipher which players were participating, which ones were sort of like um, passive, and then which ones who actually didn't want. I, you know, who knows what those interviews were like or what yeah. players want to talk you also don't want to like tattle on a teammate there's probably some code that these guys are all Mm -hmm. going by but either way that's why none of the players sort of were 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 implicated in this that was the initial sort of wave and then everyone's like oh my god uh the astros are are cheaters that 2018 world series should be taken away Mm -hmm. Uh, and and if you're wondering what the cheating was if you're not following that this story is basically it's sign stealing so um you know in the past uh you would hear stories about somebody putting somebody with binoculars in center field and they would see the pitches that the catcher was calling for the pitcher and then they would relay it to like the third base coach, third base coach would relay it to the batter. The batter would somehow know in that quick time what, what pitch was coming. Yeah. And by the way, I, I grew up a big baseball fan. I'm not nearly as interested in baseball anymore. I will not burden baseball news or gossip with, on just about anybody who's not like really invested in the game. But this story is so fucking awesome that I like I went home and I like, you know, well, I was just talking to Ash, talking to Lauren about it. And it's uh, it's fucking awesome because of the video evidence that exists today from two years ago that people are now going over. Yeah. That is what makes this so good. Well, and this is the thing is it's like so so the sign stealing comes out. And by the way, in Major League Baseball, you're allowed to like if there's a runner on second base and they can see the signs that the catcher's doing, he can relay that to the, the batter. Like you're allowed to do it without electronic means. So that's the difference. Yeah, and, and the reason why sign stealing is important, I mean, for obvious reasons, but it's like if a player if a if a batter has an idea if it's gonna be a fastball or an off speed pitch that is a huge advantage. Oh yeah, that, that, that literally, uh, you know, makes or breaks in a bat. Absolutely. So the pitcher would be on the mound. Yep. Uh, then the, all of a sudden the batter would hear like, and that would be a signal of like fastballs coming your way, and yeah. the batter would change. Yeah. The, 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 so the, the, what the, happened yeah. is the Astros at home. Uh, they put a camera in center field and they had a direct feed into the clubhouse. Uh, and now the reason this was implemented is because they added instant replay to MLB. So any kind of like video monitor that goes to like the clubhouse, they would justify by saying, well, we need to see right away if we're going to challenge um, mm-hmm. a, a bad call. So once that was in place, the Astros then said like they stuck a camera in, in center field that could see the calls that were coming from the catcher. That would go instantaneously, like Shane said, to the locker room. And then they would bang on a... Uh, a garbage can. And so the hitter would hear bang, bang, and they would know if it was going to be an off-speed pitch or not. Yeah. So th- there, you can go online and you can see this in action. Um, that's the sort of rudimentary way. So that this was the story that came out. Everyone's minds were blown. Everyone's like, oh, my God, this is crazy. A couple days later, the really big story that came out. Max, you want to take it? No, you, you, you don't. Okay. Because well, you're, you're kind of like well, really smiling over there. Uh, you, you well, did. one of the biggest, you know, one of the most popular players in baseball is this guy named uh, Jose Altuve, right? He's like... Five six people love him because he's like small but got a big heart and yeah uh, he's like this little dude who's able to hit big home runs all the time yeah. and he's been one of the best players in baseball very likable and, he, and he's a winner too like the Astros have begun to win since he joined the, well he I think he, he was drafted by them yeah um, but yeah he, he's a very beloved 
player. On that so team. this story comes out that is not only were the Ast- you know the story you know that the the GM and the coach got suspended for and, and subsequently fired uh, with the banging on the garbage can. They go well in the playoffs in like 2018. Jose Altuve was wearing a buzzer on his shoulder. So what they did was they actually got more uh, advanced technology where instead of banging on a damn garbage can, which obviously in that clip you can watch online, the opposing pitcher figures it out right that yeah. they've got the signs. So they were like, well, fuck this banging on can stuff. We can literally just send like a a remote signal to the to the shoulder so they'll know what pitch is coming. Erica, have you heard this, by the way? Uh, I didn't know this detail. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So then the internet starts to lose their mind. Jose Altuve, he's like, he's like I, I, I adamantly deny it or whatever. He puts out a denial. Again, to Max's point, people go back and find the footage from the 2018, I guess, playoff run or mm-hmm. the, the World Series or whatever. And okay, let me take, let me do take it, baby. So basically, there's an iconic home run that he hits against the Yankees to win the game. It's a walk-off home run. And I remember it happening... Uh, he hits it off. Who's the pitcher? The lefty on the Yankees, uh, Ch- Chapman. So, so he hits a home run to win the game. Chapman, after it happens, famously has this look on his face, kind of going, "How the fuck did he? How did he know?" Like he kind of looks bewildered, not even in a like pissed off way, just in a, like in a bewildered way. And so there's a, he, he's rounding the bases. Game's his, over. It's game's over. His teammates are all waiting to mob him at the plate. As he's running down uh, from third base to home, and you can oh, he's the, like, "Don't rip!" And my the shirt camera off. is on him. He's looking at the players that are waiting for him, and he says, "No, no." He starts wagging his finger. He holds his collar. And he's holding his shirt together, and is and basically saying, "Do not rip my shirt off." That is. Oh my god! Yeah. I thought that was because his. He told a lie. He didn't want his wife told yeah. him. So, so immediately oh. after the game, he's being I'm interviewed shy. by it's Ken Rosenthal wife. saying, hey, I saw, on the replay, it says you, you don't want your uh, teammates to rip off your jersey. Why is that? He said, oh, my wife got mad the last time they ripped off my jersey, and she didn't want me to do that. And oh. so everyone was like, okay, you, that's a cute thing that you have with your wife, I guess. And then everybody is uh, putting on their uh, T-shirts that you put on after you, you win a championship, like on the field. He runs into the clubhouse to change – and then puts the T-shirt. He on. never takes a shirt off on the this field. This was for the World, the World Series. Series. The World Series win. Yeah. Whoa. Was Wait, it? So well, was it for the World Series? I, win? I, I, or was this a? Semi- I'm a basketball guy, man. I don't know the full details of that. I just know it was a walk-off homer to win a series. I don't know if it was the one to get. No, to the World it wasn't. Series. You know, because they're both in the American League, so it was to Semi-final. get to the World Series. It was to get. To the and World then Series. they beat the Dodgers. That, yeah. Yeah. So it was the the ALC something. I'm sure yeah. if Nick Dyke the ALCS. ALCS. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so it was like to get to the World Series, and then that I whole shirt totally thing. bought that shirt story you because I'd been in a situation. I was actually at an Arkell show. And everyone was taking their shirts off. And my girlfriend at the time was like, don't you take your shirt off. Don't you do it. (laughs) And then I did it anyway. And then it was like the biggest deal in the world. (laughs) Well, so I was like, oh, my goodness. uh, This must be a thing for women. Story checks out. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So so now the Internet is basically just going through like video footage and photographs of that team. And like there isn't there another one where you can can see like a bunched up thing. Like basically people are now seeing, you know, the way you see like the cloud looks like a dog. I've seen so many screen grabs of like a, t- a close up on his jersey where it's like a wrinkle. Like it could be a wrinkle. And they're like, evidence, this is the buzzer. And I did see a funny tweet like in relation to that where somebody like took a like a still from like, I don't know, like the Sandlot or something. And you see a bunched up thing. They're like, not him too. You know what I mean? Like now yeah. you can just every photo could look like you're wearing a buzzer. Yeah. But it seems like people are trying. I, listen, man, like it looks pretty convincing. I 100% believe he was wearing a buzzer. Yeah. Like, that do means, you? I 100% believe it. I guess the question I have for you guys is that. It's interesting when it comes to like cheating in the realm of sports. I think you also mentioned his home and, and oh, away. Yeah. So this is a big split. This is a huge tell. So obviously you don't have access to the camera when you're on the road. It's only at home where you have a feed to your own locker room and that, that sneaky center field camera. So Max was telling me on the way to the basketball tournament, actually, because I was like, did you see this Jose Altuve shit? He's so like, yeah. He was saying that his home and away splits, meaning his batty average at home and on the road, are like... Astronomical. Yeah, different. much different. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. Like how different? Like I, I could be getting it wrong, but I think he was hitting like four hundred something at home and like one something. Away. Whoa! Yeah. Uh, so if you know what's coming, you're yeah, gonna hit pretty yeah. well. So uh, I guess my question though, it's because I think people would agree that like if if you if you're on sec if you're like a runner on second base and you know you see the catcher puts down a one for a fastball and you do one of these and and the batter at the plate can see you doing that. And it's tipping off. That that seems to be kind of in the in the realm of you know just That's competition. Accepted. That's accepted. Yep. This everyone is outraged by because yeah. it's like the the element of technology. Uh, 
is there is it, do, would you agree that that is the the, the, the tech, technology line is the thing that should not be crossed? everyone needs to be on the same playing field mm. so if one if you're playing a rec league basketball three and three tournament <laughs> and one game there's two refs but it's only for one team yeah that's unfair yeah but I wouldn't have no problem if that guy was calling foot fouls on his own team and he didn't have an allegiance to them. <laughs> it's going back you, down. <laughs> it is. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It would be no problem if, if both teams were allowed to have, have electronic equipment and mm. buzzers. Yeah. That's fine. But if only one team can do it, that's uh-huh. not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's against the rules. Uh-huh. Um, and, I mean, it, it'd be a different game if you knew what the pitcher was throwing. I mean, yeah. the, people have talked about the other thing that is sort of like, I guess – a sad element to this is it's like there's pitchers that got lit up that didn't get renewed that like looked really bad playing the the Astros at home that like you know it's like oh yeah that guy is a bum because wow, that is sad so then they would you know they'd be on shorter contracts and things wouldn't get renewed or their confidence would be shook or the that dude from the uh, the LA Dodgers like his legacy as a choke artist basically was cemented is a Kershaw yeah in in the World Series because he, when he was pitching in Houston he just looked like shit and it's like well obviously they all knew what was coming it would be awesome if the team figured it out and did like reverse signals or something to mess with to them? do the opposite. Yeah. Really fuck them up. Yeah. So, um, Altuve was four seventy two at home. He hit one forty three away. Oh my goodness! And Correa, uh, who's another implicated in the whole thing. Yeah, three seventy one at home, two eleven away. It's a little closer. Damn. So the players were in on it because they understood these codes. Well, the, well I mean, oh, they got ripped They're wearing out. the buzzers. Yeah, they're wearing and the And they were wearing the buzzers. They're accepting the signals. But they're not allowed to be reprimanded in any way? No. Well, here's the thing. I think, I, to me, it would seem that the MLB sort of like tried to give the public like a... Yep, they cheated, but that's it. Let's get rid of the GM. Let's get rid of the coach. Yeah. And then that way, no, none of these kids that love Jose or any... It's like they're trying to protect their players because if if they're implicated beyond what was done, it just opens up bigger questions. Do you take away the World Series? Do the LA Dodgers right. like have a legitimate case to be like, let's replay the World Like it's just, it's so messy that it's <laughs> almost like they wanted to like throw the GM and the coach to the Wolves and yeah. they go, let's all just move on. Yeah, let's move on. But yeah. the people are like, no, 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 no. Apparently like the city of Los Angeles, like the council people put together like a committee to, to ask for the World Series back. <laughs> like literally like last week. That's funny. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's I, honestly... I think Houston should lose their World Series the way they do that for the NCAA. Yeah. Like, I think that they that year should just be an, it should be a black mark on the MLB. Mm-hmm. There is no World Series handed out that year. The city of Houston always has to carry, carry that shame with them. And you move on. You know, it sucks for the Dodgers, but it happened. You can't redo the series. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's just like, uh, do you think any of the players will have any, like, repercussions? Because that's the thing that I find very frustrating. It's like, it, they also said it's a top-down thing. You know, like, if you're a player and you're a manager – you know, want you to, or your GM wants you, to, like your boss, essentially, the people that are going to give you these million dollar contracts, you, maybe you're inclined to listen. Mm-hmm. So then they would say, it's like, it's like a soldier. It's like, if you're a soldier, you're not really held accountable for certain things in war because you're taking um, uh, orders, orders from your yeah. general, mm-hmm. let's say. So like, do you think the players though should be suspended? Like if they're going to suspend, it's a lot like, like a few good men, eh? Yeah. The plot of that movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, another player, uh, Carlos Beltran, who was a player on the Astros and has since retired and just got hired as the manager for the New York Mets in November, has now been fired as the manager of the Without Mets. ever coaching a game. Without ever coaching a game. So he was a player? Because he was a player team. on that team. And, and, so they, and, and it was reported he knew about it. So Carlos, Carlos Beltran is like an example of somebody who has, you know, they had, the Mets let him go before he ever coached a game, uh, but he's not still an active player. It feels like all these active players that partook in this scandal, cheating, whatever, mm-hmm. it seems like all of them are going to just get to play next year, and it's, that's it. The MLB just wants it to go away. Yeah. The thing for me when it comes to this stuff um, is being a little removed from it now, I always feel like people – take it way too seriously because i remember like stare like how could they do that to the game the integrity of the game we, you know it's like where there's a commission like the, the the u.s government is like literally doing a report on steroid use in baseball yeah that's and I, then i always just go like now i'm like what did we really give that much a shit like i think it's fucking hilarious like the buzzers the buzzers thing i'm like this is amazing like i, I love thinking about baseball in this way so so i think my my take like, on what, is what do you think is amazing about it? Like you find an entertaining story, or you I you like that they they were so audacious that they found an edge that got them the win? Yeah, that's yeah. insane. Max, what if the Raptors lost the championship to Golden State, 
because Golden State was using a technology that was illegal that gave them an advantage. How That's would you feel that then? That's crazy you think that it's like, see, I, I have to, do have this this question about this. Is It's like, there are certain people that will look at this story and they'll be like, this is what's this is what's wrong now with the world. It's like, it's like this lack of integrity in meaning like at all costs, find an edge to fucking win. Just win. Always be closing. ABC, baby. And then, and then there's going to be people that go, yeah, that's the world. Don't be naive. Mm-hmm. That's how you become a millionaire. That's how you succeed. That's how you win the World Series. And that's it, man. Banners hang forever. And it's like, it seems like this philosophical divide. So I'm surprised that you fall on the other end where you think it's it's funny and that you celebrate the fact that but they found I an edge. No, no, I don't, I don't, no, I like that they got caught and I think they should be, I think they should be reprimanded and I'm happy people got fired. I just think that it's out of all like the world's issues, like this is not something to get that upset about. I mean, I, know, I get what you're saying that if it like uh, is symbolic of what's, uh, a larger issue yeah a larger issue or maybe but, it's but, not but I just feel like okay so Barry Bonds took some steroids and hit some home runs eh, it doesn't really like I just think I'm like sure like have him maybe banned from the Hall of Fame or whatever it is whatever the course of action is but like the I don't know like it just it doesn't offend me to my core but when you put in the the uh, the Raptors paradigm yeah. That's maybe where I well, think Well, I think it doesn't offend you because you don't really give a shit about baseball. Yeah. But to people who love like baseball, Dodgers who fans. work in baseball, and baseball's their whole life, this is like the worst thing anyone could ever yeah, do to disrespect true. them. That's true. But he's also kind of saying that maybe sports being your whole life is trivial. Uh, yeah, but sometimes like when it comes to Raptor stuff, it's hard for me to like get out of a funk if they lose, or the Leafs even for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. What if a rival band put x lax in your drink before a big yeah, show? Before you play, you're, you're going to be playing the Grammys, <laughs> and some band wants to sabotage you because they want the slot yeah. that you might be getting. And then Pup ends up playing the Grammys. Yeah, fuck. Would you, would you think that that is like actually just like, you know what, man? They're willing to go the extra mile. Or would you be like, we got fucked? Yeah, no, you're right. No, no, I get that. But I just don't know the line between like celebrating people actually going too far and then getting the win metaphorically and then going actually that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Like I don't I don't know the line anymore. We used to think we knew the line and it it changes depending on the person you're talking to. Like either this story is sort of an example of like hey man they did what they had to do to win or it's like they're cheaters and they deserve to be punished. Yeah. Well they're definitely cheaters. Yeah. yeah. And they definitely deserve to be punished. Maybe I just like like it because I feel like baseball has been kind of boring for a long time, and I like thinking about baseball again. Like I, I like the. I think one of the problems with baseball is that they've had no commercial appeal, and they keep losing audience year after year. And I was like, I just like like it to be a little more salacious in the same way that I like the NBA offseason. I just like like salacious shit happening in basketball, and that usually doesn't have to do with cheating, but it has to do with like, you know, like the DeAndre Jordan like locked up in a house situation, or like oh yeah, it's like, like, like entertaining. Yeah, what, like what like if a player is gonna go to another team, it's like um, it's like big business. It's like it's like it's like two tech companies merging. Like uh-huh. if Kevin Durant's gonna go to the Golden State Warriors, what does that mean for the implications of bas- like that's kind of the the business of basketball in a fun spectator yeah. way. Um, this is also like I haven't thought about baseball at all like at all since the Jose uh, Bautista bat flip yeah. so yeah I've read more about baseball in the last week than I have in years uh, so I think it's good on that level but it is a fascinating sort of like story like to your point because I do at times think it's trivial like I'm like this is hilarious like I'm looking at screen grabs of a guy's shirt to see if there's a buzzer <laughs> there what the fuck do I care but I do think it is symptomatic of a, like a larger thing and it's it's funny how like people can get very indignant about like the Astros cheating, but then like celebrate some mogul that like did insider trading to like get what they needed or something. Okay, here's another one. Okay, back to baseball. Yeah, uh, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa. That was a fucking riot. Like that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Like like when they were going back and back to back, like hitting home runs every day. And one ended up with like 72, the other with 66. I was like, this is fucking amazing. I didn't mean they were cheating. They had steroids in their system. But I was just like, but I kind of love that season. He, Barry Bonds hitting all those home runs. I'm like, every time we went up to bat, he hit it into the fucking water. That was an and awesome I kinda, time, yeah. And you loved it. Yeah, yeah. It made me like baseball again. Yeah. I didn't know they were cheating at the time. No, you didn't know they were cheating at the time. <laughs> but then in the cost and the plus minus of it all, you go, oh, it was pretty fucking awesome. Okay, he's not going to make the Hall of Fame. But that's no relevance. Maybe the equation is, does this do more for baseball than take away from it? And maybe this is taking away more from baseball. But maybe it does more for baseball. Good point. Hey, <laughs> good counterpoint. Do steroids, that's good to better. <laughs> do you guys think steroids are... Um, like steroids are this funny thing where it's like, no, you're getting an edge. But I feel like if you have like, um, like Lance Armstrong, love him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of the episode. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's just everybody has some sort of regime or like some pill combination that's just not illegal. Like yeah. everybody's pushing their bodies and then finding secret ways to like be a better like sort of physical mm-hmm. specimen. And it's just like it's like, oh no, no, that pill is one too far. But it's like everybody's already doing things to damage their body to be the best at their sport for the window that they're playing in. Yeah. It's just like it's all well, you need subjective. limitations and rules and there has to be a, an edge somewhere, right? Like an edge that you can't go past. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. just stay within those rules. That's why they have the rules, right? Right. If yeah, you're going outside of it to gain a, an unfair advantage, it's it's not right. But I feel like everybody's gaining like what could be considered an unfair advantage, you know. I guess How? if everyone could take the same drugs, if everyone it's could fine. do steroids, there'd be no problem with it. Right. But that's but that's the argument. Because Everyone's already doing a version of some training regime or some pill combination that some doctors got. Came but up it's with. within the, 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 the legal the limitations, yeah. right? So everyone can do it. Yeah. And some people don't want it. Or, or some people are risk adverse. And uh, I think steroids aren't necessarily super healthy for you if they're not used correctly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's that the greater societal problem with like you see these professional athletes taking steroids and then 12 year olds take mm-hmm. steroids and that's bad. And I yeah, get, I get that. Because I think steroids are fine for you. They're uh-huh. not necessarily unhealthy, but these people use them to an unhealthy uh, degree. But if we put sports in the category of escapism as entertainment, yep. I think there should be more wiggle room for like sort of more WWE silliness. Sti- silliness. Uh, to make it I buy entertaining. That. That, more I think more that's professional the only wrestling, I'm... less sanctimonious, like we're watching some Congress shit. Yeah, exactly. So it's like when, because I feel like there's a lot of traditionalists in baseball who like get really up in arms about like not doing it the right way. It's like when Batista flipped the bat, people were like, this is a travesty. Do you remember how upset of people course. were? I'm like, I'm like, no, that was the best fucking thing I've ever seen in baseball in the last <laughs> decade. Like more of that shit. So it's like, well, we just caught a motherfucker wearing a buzzer. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, <laughs> you know, like that, that's awesome. I love that. Like, I just think a sport like uh, baseball needs more personality and, or and just more storylines in general. And I'd watch it more. But Let, like Mike made the point about ruining the one pitcher's livelihood. Yeah, that's, that's terrible and stuff like that happens. Yeah, that's that's true. Like maybe there's more showmanship or you can throw a bat and that's allowed or pitchers with mohawks or something. But (laughs) it's like this seems like it's actually like wild thing. Ricky Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, There's drag nights where the players have to wear drag. um, That'd be cool. Last question. Uh, If you if say say a a locker room attendant comes out and he says, yeah, I absolutely helped apply the buzzer. I also have like evidence. Um, It becomes irrefutable. At that point, what do you guys think the punishment should be for Jose Altuve? Oh, that's a great question. Could could you strip an individual player of the title? Yeah, I just like like Altuve, so I don't want to see him uh, punished. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah I, I like the way they did it, just uh, doing the higher ups. Yeah. yeah. Also, because who gives a shit about a manager or a general manager or whatever? Well, that's why they were easy sacrifices. Yeah, they, exactly. And but it's like no one wants to see Altuve set out in the prime of his career for a full season. That would suck. Yeah. Yeah. Pete Rose is rolling over. His yeah, there should right be now. like more interesting punishments too. It shouldn't be just like you have to sit out. It's like you have to do like, like some humiliation sort of, or stuff? community service or I, you know sometimes you wear like a sign being like I cheated. The scarlet you know, letter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know something kind of fun. <laughs> You're not, yeah, let's make it more fun. Yeah, that's where you're coming from. Yeah. All right, let's move on. But uh, here's the thing: the one person. Let's not move on. <laughs> I, last thing I'll say one is that the the, the one uh, sector of people that I do feel bad about is like that. Dodgers fan that's been waiting for a championship for years or, or something like that. That it's just like just just sort of a working man who got fucked over that year because the Astros cheated. Yeah, or or like it's interesting because say you're some kid in Houston that like literally is obsessed with the Astros. It's your life. You're 12 year old. Like I remember how I cared about the Jays, yeah. and you win this championship, and now it's like you can't even brag about it on Twitter. Everyone's yeah. gonna make funny. Like you don't have it anymore you know oh, what your I mean? championship mer- like imagine you got a ring or something like i don't know oh, like imagine yeah. your raptors rings like just didn't were nullified yeah. to taint it like it truly yeah. taints it like yeah. it's like i don't would know would you think that would be kind of cool though because you would have such a collector's item at that point <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of something that doesn't even exist yeah but you have it yeah that would be awesome yeah like yeah. I, it just sucks for everybody involved and the yeah. whole facade comes crumbling down when these things get exposed mm-hmm. i see why the mlb was like i'm you know i'm surprised they didn't just sweep it under the rug it would probably have been like less embarrassing for baseball for sure mm-hmm. but there you have it that's what's good about nowadays with social media and stuff because uh individuals can make something go viral yeah like this guy did the really compelling edit mm-hmm. of the people banging the drum yeah which got right. millions of views yeah. so you can't ignore that absolutely whereas if this happened 20 years ago you just simply wouldn't Keep it out of the public eye. Yeah. It'd just be some like thing people talk about, like the frozen envelope with David Stern and uh, Patrick Ewing in New York. You know, like it's like 
you can never prove it. You know what I mean? It's just like it becomes sort of like almost like a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. Now stuff can be proven. Right. Guys, let's move on to, uh, before we get to the scale, we're going to do Shane's surprise. All right. I, I do think we should hit the scales uh, pretty quick, uh, which is good because my topic today kind of sucks. But I did find this uh, funny. I didn't know the angle to go with it, but I saw a news story of a, a guy was getting his uh, uh, caricature done. <laughs> and he ended up, before he paid the guy, he ended up stealing the caricature artist's uh, money bag, which had over $500 in it. Okay. But uh, I just thought it was funny because now the police are looking for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly he stole the money and booked, but the caricature le was left behind. <laughs> yeah. And the news articles like obviously his features are exaggerated. But if you can just imagine like a smaller lips and a smaller nose. And I just thought that was really funny. And I, I couldn't necessarily think of a great angle, to, but I thought it would get a good laugh to sh show you guys and tell you the story. Um, but let's hit the scale. So <laughs> All right, here we go. So this is our, our mid-challenge weigh-in. By the way, uh, I'm actually kind of furious right now. Uh, I, no one or nothing in particular. But last week, I was in L.A. and I was super healthy. Like, I hardly ate any bread, did not snack on any candy, had like three beers the whole week. Wow. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a fucking – this is great. This is great for the diet. And then I did eat a bunch of pizza on Saturday. Ooh. Okay. Um, but I was like, what, what's one pizza night for a whole week of being good? And also I'm going to go to the gym the next day and play a bunch of basketball. And then last night I w w uh, weighed myself and it was like no different. So I'm like, what the fuck? So what were you on this scale? Which uh, I think it was 186. I thought it was 187. I can, I can look. Oh, Erica has. Well, I think it was 186.6. Erica has the right. facts. Which, uh, we're going to do this. Okay. Actually, you know, I was, I'm I felt like. Down on my undies now. Please. Okay. I was Put eating. Oh, yeah, we're, oh, yeah, stay on mic, Max. Max said he's stripping down his undies. I, I was eating pretty well. I was doing pretty good. But then, like I said, on Saturday, I hung out with our friend Randall and I had some pad thai. Not great. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday after we uh, played in the tournament, uh, Shane and myself and our wives and our kids all went for lunch. And that was not a healthy lunch. Right, no. Okay, so Max, you were 186.6 on January 6th. Oh, okay. Okay, you dropped. 183.6. Oh. That's awesome. That That's is good. awesome. Okay. You're on your way. Uh, Mike, what are your predictions? What was here? I on the the original day? Uh, Mike was one seventy six. Okay, I was one seventy six. Let's see what I am now. Now, just a disclaimer: I am wearing jeans, and the sweater that I am wearing does weigh six pounds. So uh, here we go. But wait, what's your prediction? Oh, I'm gonna guess that I've lost a pound and a half. Okay. Oh. I think more than that, Mike. Whoa! What did it say? I gained weight. That's yeah, impossible. <laughs> it has to be the G. Oh, hold on. Did, did you put? Were you wearing I'm a sweater last time? No, I don't think Four so. Four pounds. Take, take yeah. off the sweater. Take off the sweater. I'm not taking off the sweater in this office, please, Max. Okay. I don't want them to see my little bits. Sure. <laughs> uh, do, do you think that's possible? How could you possibly have gained weight? That's it a great question. This wearing... is why dieting is very. Confusing. I don't know. I, I, I'm I trying like to see. I, should, I don't yeah. have my phone. I got a sweater. I got jeans. You were wearing a crew neck sweater last time and jeans. Uh, this sweater's a little heavier than yeah, that. Yeah, so slightly, but I wouldn't say four pounds. Crazy. Okay, mine will be the true barometer here. So I was 199 last time. Wait. I'm predicting I'm 193 right now. Ooh, so you've been going pretty hard. What have you been doing? Sorry. Just uh, playing basketball every day helps. Yeah. And I've been uh, eating no, little to no bread, almost no bread. Okay. Flock salads? No, no. Flock, I find the cheese that can... Not be good for me. Ooh, okay. Ooh, 195.8. Oh, that's a little disappointing. Jeez. Oh, so, so you and I kind of dropped the same amount, like three yeah. pounds each. Three pounds. Yeah, but I gained four, so. But uh, the, the, then you kind of begin to wonder. Could be muscle for you, though, Mike, because you've been probably doing different stuff for your, with your exercise routine that you normally don't do. I've been more active muscle in the last is heavier weeks. than fat, right? Yeah. yeah. But I will say, to be completely honest, um, I did not start the challenge when we said we would start the challenge. I actually kind of went crazy knowing I was going to get right for the challenge. <laughs> and so I actually didn't start getting right until like the start of last week. Okay. And I kind of went overboard just because I was like, really, I was mostly concerned about the final weigh-in, which is when is that? Feb. What, what did we say? One month? One That'll month. be February 6th. Okay. I'll, I'll actually be gone at that point. So I'm back. I'll, I'll be back Feb, uh, Feb 11th. Where are you going? I'll be in Mexico. 
Okay, nice. wait. Let's make it like the Valentine's Day episode. That no, well, be let's it. do it before you leave then. Because you want to have a good time on New Mexico. Yeah, but I wouldn't have wasted two weeks eating pizzas, man. Okay. And, and I Mike, thought I was trying to let you enjoy no, your I lose Mexico. weight in Mexico. Mike has a, an amazing theory that he loses weight on vacation. I oh, do. wow. In those tropical places. Interesting. Because I'm sweating so It's actually good for him. Oh, so okay. let's do like a Valentine's Day. We're getting right I'm for gone. our sweeties. Feb 10 to 20, though. So uh, maybe Feb 21? Sure. Feb 20, that gives me enough time to get to my ideal weight. Oh, okay. man. I can have a crazy lunch again. Feb 20. I just, the more we push it back. <laughs> <He's> push it <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, yes. See it, pizza hut. Okay. So Feb 21st is the official yeah. date. All right, cool. Feb oh, yeah. 21st is the official weigh in, guys. And we'll are, try to get to our ideal. Are you going to do anything different uh, this week, diet wise? Going way harder in the right direction. I What really screwed me up is um, I went out. I, I saw a friend I hadn't seen in a while, Mark Myers. Mm. And we went to a bar. And alcohol is always going to be mm. uh, your downfall fall when you're yeah. trying to lose weight i drank a lot of pints that night as well yeah and i, I, I forgot had, about that yeah i've we, been trying to do vodka sodas too i was been me really too. going on vodka sodas but it doesn't seem to make a difference right? yeah i, I, must, I had but. one beer on like six vodka sodas yeah. which that's just too much alcohol to be losing weight on. what are your thoughts on like high protein diet versus just vegetarian diet because people yeah. say like the protein the high protein is good if you're not eating too much bread like eggs and meat basically I, that's that's effective for losing weight is it healthy that's uh, seem to be varying degrees of research to prove it or go against it wait high protein to lose weight yeah yeah like as the, long as you're not eating the dan carbs. hamilton diet i i found joe rogan too joe rogan people like that i found when i went on it i, I dropped weight really quick but a lot of reports say it's not healthy for you no dan would be like that, those are old bullshit reports from the 70s and there's a uh, vegan documentary out right now that Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, produced, and it's g- gaining a lot of traction. Is he and, vegan? Uh, I think he went full vegan. Yes. Wow. Or he's at least he has like five. And is he looking good? Week. Yeah, but this it's a very compelling documentary to watch. It there's like uh, power lifters, people in the NFL who are uh, the year they started this plant based diet, they made the All Star team for the first time in their career. Oh, like, I've heard this doc. Yeah. Maybe I'll try doing that. No, watching it on three, I'll start. <laughs> watching it <die. laughs> All right, we're good. Peace.